students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. I hope everybody has had a fantastic week and is looking forward to a great weekend. Hi, Abhishek. Hi, Vishnu. Welcome, Janiel. Hi, Bharat. Welcome, Khyber. Mahmoud. Good to see many uh, students. Uh, this is a members chat class, of course. Everybody is welcome to watch. We will have an all chat class in 90 minutes, which will focus on the listening section. But first, in this class, we are looking at a task one writing um, for the academic IELTS, and this will be a combination type where a line graph is combined with a pie chart, and it's coming from our own exams. Uh, again, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there. For the general IELTS, check us out at G ieltshelp.com that's general ieltshelp.com uh, for general ielts task ones definitely go there and look at the videos on that website i'll quickly show you what these websites look like this is the academic one here with the blue background you can click that big red button to join our premium package it is a one-time payment for lifetime access we are an official ielts registration center and uh, we are official British Council agents. Uh, for the general IELTS, it's the green background. You can click that big red button. And again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Well worth it. If you have questions, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com and I will gladly help you out. Also, uh, be sure to use our apps. We have lots of free materials there as well. Academic IELTS Help app, uh, links to ahelp.com. General IELTS Help app, links to gieltshelp.com. Hi, Rashika. Good to see more members in the class. Of course, everybody should stay and watch because you will learn lots in this class on how to write for the Academic IELTS Task 1. And then uh, tomorrow we'll have a question and answer session members. So get ready for that Q&A class, okay? Question and answer session. Uh, members, think about your questions for tomorrow's class. And now let's get into task one. Here we go. All right. Uh, so first step is first. We're writing an expository essay, okay? Academic IELTS. It's an expository essay. Uh, just as a quick review, I know we have lots of new members now. Uh, what are the four basic styles of writing in English? So what are the four uh, essay types? Another way that I could ask you. Uh, everybody should be familiar with this. If you uh, know it, it's good review to remind yourself of this. Uh, if you uh, are not sure, then you have to learn this. So. Uh, what are the four types of essays? This one is an expository type. That's one of the types I just gave you. So four uh, types of uh, writing styles or essay uh, types in English. Well, I don't think it's just English. Some other languages as well. Uh, number one, well, A, it's not really number one, but... Um, okay, so we've got descriptive, yeah, very good, Kyber. Uh, Jainil says persuasive, narr narrative, that's right. So uh, persuasive, which is task two. Uh, we have expository, which is task one academic. We have narrative which is task one general. And uh, we have descriptive, which if you want my opinion, well, not just my opinion, but descriptive, it's kind of like the father of all. Uh, the reason why I say the father of all is because all types of writing use good descriptive language, okay? Abhishek, argumentative essay writing is actually one type of persuasive writing, okay? So argumentative, Abhishek, is actually considered a subcategory of writing, okay? There's different kinds of persuasive. Um, 
like counter argumentative, argumentative, um, advantage, disadvantage type. So there's different types of persuasive uh, essays. There's different types of expository and narratives as well, but we don't need to get into that, okay? So if you're going to study English literature, uh, then you will learn a lot more uh, subcategories of writing styles and essay types, but these are the big ones, okay? These are the big ones, okay? All right. So task one is expository and it's third person, meaning you don't use I and you. Uh, what else should you not do in an expository essay that many students do in their task one? Okay, so this is kind of a, what should you avoid in academic IELTS task one? Avoid in expository essays, uh, which many students uh, do, okay? Yeah, very good, Jainil. Um, don't include information that's not included. Don't give an opinion, okay? So do not include a personal opinion or any information that cannot be clearly seen in the graph or chart. That's right, okay? So many students make that mistake in their academic task one is they say, oh, the reason that it was really popular is because it's spacious or because it was cheap, but we don't have that information. You're using your own information. So uh, yeah, exactly, Kashir. So avoid opinionated narrative. That's task two, right? That's the goal of task two, not the goal of task one. Task one, you're basically reporting and explaining, okay? So the goal of task one is to report, explain, and interpret, okay? That's what you're doing. You report, you explain, you interpret, but you do not give opinion, okay? All right, so Kyber, uh, you want to use objective words, okay? So instead of using words like amazingly, um, you want to use significantly, okay? So use objective words. Uh, good question, Kyber. So therefore, uh, use objective language and third uh, person author voice. Okay, that's the standard, okay? And again, it's not me telling you this. It's not like, oh, Adrian's come up with a good way to do task one and get a high band score. Uh, no, what I'm teaching you is what I learned from my professors in university. I was fortunate to learn under some of the best professors in the world, and uh, these are standards of English literature, okay? So it's not Adrian's opinion, it's the opinion of English literature, the way you will learn it in your first year English literature classes in university. All right, cool. So uh, let's go back to the question. It was kind of a derail, but a very important um, uh, bit of information. So here we go. Uh, let's read this. So read this with me. Let's read it carefully, and then we'll write this essay together. So the chart below show... The charts below show the percentage change in home buyers in two countries and the types of homes sold in various years. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Okay, so we read the countries, uh, home buyers, two countries, uh, some information there. Okay, and then here we have our first graph. It's the housing market, and it's comparing USA and Canada uh, from 2001 to 2011. So we have a 10-year uh, period, and we have the percentage in home buyers, so people buying homes. So from zero to uh, 100 uh, percent, okay, All right, of home buyers. That's the change, okay, careful. So it's the change in home buyers, all right? 
Okay, uh, so that's uh, interesting. And then uh, we have uh, some more information. Uh, types of housing sold in the USA in various years. Okay, so we have 2002, uh, 2006, 2010, and we have apartments represented by the blue. We have townhomes represented by the orange, and then we have a house uh, represented by the gray. Okay, so clearly the pie charts are a micro snapshot of the line graph. So the line graph is showing the change in home buyers in two countries, and the pie charts are looking at a more detailed piece of information in three years, uh, looking at the types of homes bought in those three specific years in the USA. All right, so now we can use this information to start our introduction, which is also the overview, okay? Now, the overview has two parts. What are the two parts of the overview? Okay, so introduction, let's also call it the overview, okay? And the introduction, the, in the overview, it has two parts, okay? Uh, what are the two parts? What do we need to do? What's included in a good expository essay introduction when we're dealing with graphs and charts? What's the first part? Okay, so Nikhil says the introduction and the main features. So the main features is definitely the second part. Okay. Yeah, the most observable features, Nikhil. The first part can be a little bit Kyber says paraphrasing the question with some uh, important details. Yeah, absolutely, Kyber. So uh, part one is uh, paraphrase the question. It means use your own words uh, to restate the question with key points or key details. Okay, yeah, important details. Absolutely, okay. So let's do that. I'm just going to hop back up here so we can see the question, okay? And um, go ahead, members. So paraphrase this, and based on what you saw in those uh, graphs, so in the line graph, and based on what you saw in the pie charts, paraphrase this. Here, you don't need to paraphrase this part. Uh, and then add some details. I'll show you the uh, line graph and the uh, pie chart again. So here's the line graph again. It's showing USA and Canada change, percent change in home buyers uh, from 2001 to 2011. Be very careful with the titles, okay? So 2001 to 2011. Um, and then the pie charts are 2002, 2006, and 2010, okay? And then you have apartments, townhomes, and houses, all right? So uh, I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to paraphrase the question with my own details, and then we'll compare, okay? So... I'm staying quiet so you can think a little bit while you're writing, okay? All right. 
uh, there's my uh, paraphrase with details using the information from the graphs. I basically looked at the uh, axes. I looked at the legend um, of the two and uh, the titles, and that's what I used, okay? So those key details are coming from the titles, the legend, the XY axes. All right, Mahmoud says, the given line graph and pie charts show the percentage houses which sold from 2001 to 2011. The pie charts depict the type of houses which sold specifically in the USA. Okay, Mahmoud, not bad. Uh, as you will see from my example, you could be a little bit more uh, detailed, a little bit more specific. Uh, band 9 essays, students, are the ones that maximize the use of words in the essay. So uh, giving the most detailed and clear information with as few of words as possible. That's what you need to do for band nine, okay? So I'm gonna give you that again, just so you can think about that in the future or as you're studying. So uh, these essays give the most detailed and uh, clear information using as few of words as possible, okay? That's what you need to do for a band nine, right? Janiel says, the given line graph depicts the proportion differences in home buyers in the USA and Canada from 2001 to 2011, and the three pie charts illustrate the different types of houses uh, the three, three different types of houses, apartment, house. Uh, Jainil, it's a little bit awkward. You want to rethink that, okay? The whole sentence reads a bit awkward. It's not terrible, but it's off, okay? Uh, Nick Hill says, uh, the presented line graph depicts the ratio change in home buyers in Canada and the United States from 2001 to 2011, and the pie chart, there's three of them, Kyber, uh, the pie chart illustrates uh, apartments, townhomes, and houses. Careful with your plurals, uh, Kyber. Okay. Uh, Nick Hill says the given line graph depicts the information of variation in the proportion of home purchasers in America and Canada from 2001 to 2011. Uh, Nick Hill, it's a little bit on the uh, over complex side. Uh, and the pie chart illustrates the three different homes, apartment, houses, and townhouse in 2002, 2006, and 2010. Uh, what do you mean, Nick Hill, that it illustrates the three different homes? The proportion of homes bought or sold in the U.S., right? So you want to be a little bit uh, clearer there, Nick Hill. Okay. All right. Abhishek, the line graph depicts the ratio of change in home buyers in two countries, namely Canada and America, uh, between 2001 to 2011. However, the pie charts illustrate the three different types of homes like apartment, houses, and uh, townhomes uh, in the USA. Uh, Abhishek, not bad. You don't really need to use namely. A lot of students like to use this namely. Usually that word is unnecessary. You can use it, but you're not really getting points for it because it's not necessarily to write namely. In university, um, the professor's assistant will often cross out words like namely just because it doesn't actually have any additional value. The sentence makes sense without that word perfectly fine. Okay, so... Okay, Vishnu Rashika, also not bad. Uh, I'm going to keep moving along here. Uh, I will read yours next time, so keep writing, okay? Uh, so here is my um, paraphrase, okay? Uh, the line graph depicts the percentage change in home buyers in Canada and America from 2001 to 2011, and the three pie charts give a snapshot of the types of homes, apartments, house, 
or townhouse. Notice how I don't have plurals, houses, apartments, just singular. So types of homes, apartment, house, or townhouse bought in the United States in three years, 2002, 2004, and 2006. So very specific, okay, to what it is. And notice that I don't actually have that many words, but I have a lot of detail here. There's a lot of detail in my statement. I'm just using the titles and the information from the legends, okay? Uh, Kyber, just what I said. So Kyber is what should be the details. So the details that I'm including are the specific countries. Instead of saying two countries, I say Canada and America. Instead of USA, I just paraphrase America. Um, and then instead of just saying uh, in various years, uh, I give the year, the year range, 2001 to 2011. Um, I give the specific number of pie charts. There's three pie charts. What do they do? They give a snapshot of the types of homes. What types of homes? What's in the legend? Apartment house, townhouse. Bought where? Bought in the USA. When? In 2002, 4, and 6. So just taking that specific information. Okay, clear? All right, so now we want to report the main feature. Okay, so now comes the main feature. You have to write about 180 words. 150 is the minimum. So you want to write a bit more than just 150. Uh, yeah, Vishnu, you can use a decade, but uh, I'm being more specific here. I can use the word decade later, so I don't need to uh, be too concerned at the beginning of my essay, Vishnu, to use all of my vocabulary. In my summary, I can also use the word decade. Uh, here, I firstly want to give the very specific idea to my reader. Okay. When you're writing Vishnu, think about it like you're presenting the information to a college or university class, and they might not have access to this data, okay? and it still has to be very clear in their minds. Okay. All right, um, so let's look at the main features. Oh, look at that. <laughs> okay. So what do we notice? Um, just look at the trends. Don't worry about the years or the specific data. Um, just look at the trends, right? Okay, um, so we notice right away that there is a great deal of variance, right? So you have a lot of up and down and then a peak and then a plateau and then a drop and then another uh, flat line. And then same with Canada, you have quite a bit of fluctuation going through. So that's very noticeable, okay? So Janiel, right away, I can see in the... Chad, Janiel said, significant fluctuation. Yeah, absolutely, uh, throughout this period. Um, okay, and we can also see that the patterns are not really the same. So Canada and the U.S., they're quite different. So even though these countries are neighboring, they're both quite strong economies, you don't have a lot of paralleling. You have a little bit of paralleling here, but other than that, you really don't have too many parallels. So different events are happening at different years. Okay, so... Uh, the countries uh, show fluctuations and differences, right? And then we have this um, or these three pie charts here, okay? And then uh, in the first pie chart in 2002, we have 55% buying a house. Um, in the third one, we have 45% buying apartments. Uh, and then uh, in 2006, um, so... Here, uh, we can also notice that there is a fair bit of change in the types of homes um, that people prefer to buy, okay? So that's what we notice, all right? Uh, Bakrat, I wouldn't say gradual change, okay? We don't know that. Um, I would definitely say that there's a clear difference in the types of homes being bought uh, with the years given in the pie charts, okay? So different proportions for different types. So that's what I would put into my main feature, those key elements uh, from the uh, pie charts and the line graphs. Now the line graph, of course, is higher level because it's giving more general information, right? And the pie charts are more detailed. So that's where you want to use the linking word furthermore, okay? Furthermore, because it's furthermore, it's more detail. Right. So write the um, write the the uh, main feature here, and um, 
Bakrat, uh, Rashika, Vishnu, a little bit faster this time. So try to be the first ones to get it up into the chat. If you make mistakes, it's okay. I want to read yours as well. So be a little bit quicker. Work on fluency as well, okay? All right. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to uh, write uh, this uh, key feature that we just discussed. You do the same, okay? Nice fluency, Mahmoud. I can see that you're really pushing to get your ideas out fast. That's important, okay? So, All right, so there we go. Uh, Mahmoud says, in the line graph, there's a significant variation in the houses sold from 40 to 80%. Okay, uh, houses bought, but yeah, sold is okay too. Somebody's buying, obviously somebody's selling, Mahmoud. Good, so you're giving the range 40 to 80%. Um, I might save the actual specific percents until I start analyzing the data, Mahmoud. Uh, so I would be even a little bit more general at this point with my words. I wouldn't go into uh, the quantitative information necessarily yet. I'm going to do that as soon as I start my analysis. Okay. Uh, so this is what I wrote here. At initial observation, it is clear uh, that the proportion of home buyers fluctuates in both countries throughout the given decade, whereby each country shows a unique pattern. Uh, furthermore, the pie charts reveal that the types of homes bought in the U.S. in the three years also varied significantly. Okay? All right. So waiting for some more. Meanwhile, I'm going to start the analysis because I want you to learn as well to move fluently. Okay? So I'm looking at major trends here, and I'm going to start with Canada, not the USA. The reason why I'm going to start with, anybody know? Um, why, why am I, um, so unique pattern means that this one goes like this and this one goes like this. Each one is unique from the other. It's different from the other, Kyber. So this is a unique pattern. This is a unique pattern to each country, okay? Um, so why am I starting with Canada here? So I'm going to start my description with Canada and I'm going to describe this point here, this point here, and then uh, this point here, okay? Um, I'm gonna be a little bit careful here because it's easy for me to write too many words and run out of time. I have to keep in mind I only have 20 minutes, right? So um, I'm gonna be really careful to uh, keep this description as simple as possible and just talk about highs and lows in specific years, okay? And then um, with the USA, I'm gonna be second, so I'll compare the USA as well, uh, making comparisons here. Um, but uh, because they're so unique, okay, I'm starting with Canada. Why am I starting with Canada? Why am I not starting with uh, the U.S. Can anybody tell me that? Okay. Meanwhile, I'll read Janiel's main features. So Janiel says, immediately it is evident that there were some significant fluctuations and variations throughout the period. 
Furthermore, uh, buying different types of houses by Americans showed significant changes. Jainil, furthermore, uh, Americans showed significant changes in the types of homes uh, that they bought. Okay, a little bit different grammar. Yeah, exactly, Jainil. Very good. So Jainil says, um, if I start with Canada first, okay, and then I go to USA second, okay, uh, then um, because the pie charts are a more detailed snapshot of the USA, it makes sense to uh, transition and create more cohesion that way. So I'm going Canada, USA, USA. So Canada line graph, USA line graph, USA pie charts. Does that make sense? So really pay attention to your logic when you're writing your task two, that can, or your task one, uh, that can, and your, and your task two, uh, that can really save you some marks on your essay, okay? Yeah, exactly, Kyber, to maintain the structure of the essay. So I'm going to write about uh, Canada first and then USA second. So USA, I'm going to uh, start one here, two here, and then three there, okay? Uh, now, um, these kinds of uh, points that the United States also had a peak change, but a couple years after Canada, um, I'm going to make a comparison here as well. Okay, so I will definitely compare those two. All right, and then we'll talk about uh, the pie charts. So um, you have to be very careful. There's a lot of information here. And just in my introduction overview, I have 92 words. So I basically have half of my essay already done. as far as word count in my introduction overview. So I have about 100 words left. If I'm going for that band nine, I have roughly 100 words left to describe what's going on in the line graph, in the pie charts, and maybe give a summary. Okay, maybe a little bit more. Band nine, okay, but you're not, you shouldn't be going over 200. You should max out at 200 words roughly. Okay, if you're writing a lot more than 200, you have to really pay attention and make sure that you're still within 20 minutes and you're still producing quality work, all right? So, uh, I'm just gonna grab my overview. Okay, and I'm gonna to stick it under the whole bit here and then I'm going to um, start with Canada and explain that in 2001 there was a 50% change I'm not gonna worry about things like these tiny little dips I'll explain that there, I've already explained in my introduction that there's fluctuations, so I don't need to go into that in too much detail I want to pick out this point here that's at 90% in 2005 so half a decade later. So I'm gonna start with that and then make some comparisons to the US as well, okay? So here we go. So at closer observation or a closer analysis, I've already used observation. So at closer analysis, Canada had a change of 50% in 2001, and this sharply uh, increased to 90% half a decade later. So all I'm doing is describing this bit here, and I'm being very careful to be concise. Um, so then between 2005 and seven, 
there was a 30% dip roughly, and then an, again an increase with a dip in 2010. So that's all I'm going to write. I don't, I'm going to keep it short because I don't have a lot of words. Okay, I have to be very careful. So at closer analysis, Canada had a change of 50%. If I want to paraphrase home buyers, I can say home uh, purchasers. In 2001, and this sharply increased to 90% half a decade later. Uh, by 2007, this dropped uh, 35%, and then again increased uh, for a few years uh, before another sharp uh, decrease uh, during the last uh, year of this period, okay? Now, I'm burning through my words fast, so I have to be careful, all right? Uh, Mahmoud says, houses bought in Canada fluctuated from 2001 to 2005. However, the proportion of these houses uh, sold decreased from 2005 to 2007 and again increased um, in 2008. Okay, Mahmoud, good. I like how you're typing fast. You're making a few mistakes, but you're also working on your fluency and that's okay, right? Throw a few percentages in there as well, okay? Uh, Abhishek, um, yeah, you can separate the body paragraphs into line graph and pie charts, but it's not absolutely necessary as long as you have clear writing. Okay, all right. Yeah, Jainil, that's a very good question on how to make your writing concise. That's why I'm giving you th this example, okay? So I'm picking out uh, the most important points, okay? I'm not getting stuck up on too many details, all right? So, um, conversely, the change in home buyers in the USA uh, peaked. Okay, so here I'm making a comparison. That's why I'm using conversely. Uh, peaked in 2007 and then dropped. Uh, by 2009, and I can add some percentages, okay? So peaked in 2007 to 90%, okay? So conversely, uh, the change in home buyers in the USA uh, peaked in 2007, 2008 at 90%. And then um, dropped dramatically in the following uh, years to just. Uh, and notice how here I didn't even bother with the start. So I didn't say it started at the same as Canada and then fluctuated. I just talked about the peak. It peaked. Okay. Um, and then dropped to. Um, twenty percent, roughly, uh, by the end of the period. Okay. Okay. All right. So I've basically described the key points of this line graph in these words here. Right? I didn't get stuck up on it. And yeah, now if you'd like, um, Abhishek, you could start a new paragraph. It's okay. Um, so uh, I have 76 words here. Okay, so right now if I take my 76 and I add it to my previous, I'm at 168 words, so I have about 40 to 50 words to finish up this essay. It's not a lot, right? Uh, so, because I will run out of time, and quality over quantity. We have a lot of information here, OK? 
okay? So again, I'm interpreting and taking the main features, all right? So here in 2002, homes uh, make up more than half of the pie. And then in 2006, it's roughly half, okay? But by 2010, it's only a third. Now, uh, there is a slight increase in the amount of apartments and townhomes from 2002 to 2006, and even more so in 2010, where uh, especially apartments become dominant. So I'm taking all of that information and I'm kind of bottling it up in a very concise uh, kind of way. So again, um, the way that I do this, and I see that Kyber, Jainil, uh, Abhishek, um, you're all thinking like, how, how am I concise? Um, the problem, so the mistake that many students make is what they do is they go piece by piece. So they just look at this, they start talking about this, then they talk about this, and then they talk about this. Well, if you only have these three pie charts for your question, that's okay. But because we have a lot more information here, that's not the right strategy. When you have a lot more information, you need to look at all of this and look at the big pieces as I just showed you instead of going like piece by piece and dot by dot and getting lost in all of those little sentences. So rather than getting lost in all those little sentences, I'm just taking out the key elements, okay? And you'll see how I can now put that together with words like half, popularity, uh, more, less, okay? Using those words, all right? Abhishek says noted, all right? So uh, basically when you have more information, you're looking at bigger chunks of information, especially when you have a time limit, okay? Uh, yeah, fractions are absolutely okay for percentages, Kyber. It's a very good way to uh, paraphrase it. When you're writing proportion, uh, proportion is a synonym for fraction. Okay, so fraction, proportion, absolutely. So uh, when you have 30% here, it's 1 over 3, okay, or a third, or proportionally, it's a third. So it's a fractional uh, explanation. Yeah, and that's totally okay, absolutely. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that, all right? Uh, so I'm going to take the information that I just explained and I'll put that together into a sentence, okay? Um, here we go, all right? So the details in the pie charts reveal that houses... Um, were preferred by just over uh, a half of all Americans in uh, 2002, but uh, this amount uh, became less in 2006 and was just a third by uh, 2010. On the other hand, both townhomes and apartments gained popularity at each uh, four-year interval and apartments eventually became the preferred home by the majority in 2010. Okay, so that's all I say uh, by looking at those pie charts. So I don't get lost in a lot of details, 